Now let's look at division of decimals. The blank is the result of division. That is quotient. A quotient is the answer to any division problem. In division, the number being divided is the dividend. The average of a set of numbers is the sum of the numbers divided by the number of add-ins. And if division is written in fraction form, the divisor is the denominator of the fraction. So now let's actually look at a couple division problems. So the first one, um, this has a decimal point in the dividend. We're going to just bring that decimal point straight up into our answer and proceed with our division process. So 4 divides into 6 one time. 1 times 4, subtract, bring down the 4. 4 goes into 24 six times. Multiply, subtract, bring down. 4 goes into 8 twice. So it looks like our answer is 1 and 62 hundredths. Now let's try the second one. It's 45 divided by 8. You might be saying, well, there's no decimal point in this problem, but there is. It's hiding right behind. It's invisible, but it is behind the 5. So we can actually have 45, and we could put zeros behind this, and that's not changing the value of anything. It's just changing the way it looks a little bit. Now the way we're going to divide this out is 8 goes into 4 0 times, but it goes into 45 5 times. 5 times 8 is 40. Since it didn't divide in evenly, previously we would have said 5 remainder 5. But now that I can do this decimal point and add on zeros and bring down zeros, I can keep dividing until I do get a remainder of 0. 8 goes into 50 6 times. I've got that next zero coming down. 8 goes into 20. That would be 2 times. I don't have another zero, but you know what? I can tack on another one and just bring another one down. 8 goes into 40 five times. And now I finally get the remainder of zero. So now, where does my decimal point go? Well, I bring it straight up, so it's going to go between my 5 and my 6. So final answer is 5 and 625 thousandths. So what happens if the decimal point is in the divisor and the dividend, like this problem? Well, we're going to swing this decimal point to behind the 9. That way we're dividing by a whole number. Since I swing it to the right in the divisor, I have to swing it 1 to the right in my dividend as well. And then that's where my new decimal point's going to go. And now we just proceed with our division. So 39 goes into 0, 0 times. 39 goes into 2, 0 times. 39 goes into 22, 0 times. 39 goes into 226. Well, if I round the 39 to, let's say, 40, and I round the 226 to 228, and I know that sounds strange, but the 39 is a 4 and 228. Um, I know 28 is divisible by 4. I know... Um, Maybe we want to round it to 230. How many times does 4 go into 23? We might say 5 or 6. Um, let's try 5. 5 times 9 is 45. And if this doesn't work, I can always go back and change it. 5 times 3 is 15 plus 4. So it's going to give me 1. That's going to give me 3, so 31. Okay, so that worked. Bring down my 2. Um, let's see here. I'm going to do some rounding again. Round the 39 to 40. Let's round the, th the 312 to 300. How many times would 40 go into 300? Or how many times does 4 go into 30? Let's try, um, do you want to try 8? 
or 9. Let's try, let's try 9. 9 times 9 is 81. 9 times 3, oh, it's already going to be too big, is 27 plus 8. Okay, so let's back up and change it to 8. Oops, that was too far. So let's put an 8. 8 times 9 is 72. 3 times, or 8 times 3 is 24, plus 7, oh, goes in evenly. So final answer is 58 thousandths. Now on this one, looks like we're going to have to move our decimal point two times. One, two, one, two. And proceed with our division. 28 goes into 0, 0 times. 28 goes into 14, 0 times. 28 goes into 145. So now if we round the 28 to 30 and we round the 145 to 50, we, we, we really have 15 and 3. So let's try 5 times. 5 times 8 is 40. 5 times 2 is 10 plus 4. That worked out well. And 28 actually goes into 56 evenly two times. So final answer on this one is 52 hundredths. Now recall when you're solving equations, we're trying to get the variable all by itself. So since right now that variable is being multiplied by 5.4, we need to divide by 5.4 because 5.4 cancels with 5.4. Now with equations, what you do to one side, you must do to the other side. So I need to do the division of 38.8 divided by 5.4, 5.4, and that's going to give me whatever x is. So let's do our computation. And we're dividing it by 5.4. So I have to move my decimal point one time. 54 goes into 3 zero times. 54 goes into 38 zero times. 54 goes into 388. Well, if we round it to 50 and we round it to 400, then that would be like 40 divided by 5, which would be 8. But on both those, I had to round them both up. So I'm, instead of trying 8, I'm going to try 7. I might have to bump that back up, but we'll see. 7 times 4 is 28. 7 times 5 is 35 plus 2, 37. Oh, nope, this one works just fine. Bring down that next 8. 54 goes in twice. That would be 8. So my answer is 7.2, or 7 and 2 tenths. Similar on this bottom one, again, we want to get the y all by itself. And I need to get rid of this multiplication of 14 by using division, because then those both cancel. But remember what you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So now I just have to do the math. Now a negative divided by a positive. I know my answer is negative. I'm going to go ahead and pencil that in. Come over off to the side to do my division. My decimal point comes right up into my answer. I know 14 goes into 13 zero times. 14 goes into 130. Well, if that was 140, I'd say 10. So let's drop it down one and say 9. 9 times 4, 36. 9 times 1 is 9, plus 3, 12, subtract, 42 goes in, or I'm sorry, 14 goes into 42, um, I know more than 2 times, let's try 3 times, that's going to give me 12, oh, that's exact, okay, so it looks like y equals a negative 93 hundredths. Okay, one more. Now this is actually an order of operations problem combining, uh, looks like we have an addition and a multiplication. So remember, when you're working with order of operations, you have to do the multiplication first. So I need to do 3.75 times 
times 2.04, I gotta do that first. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times 7 is 28 plus 2. 4 times 3 is 12 plus 3. I've got my zeros, 0 times 5, 0 times 7, 0 times 3. Now going with my 2's, 2 times 5 is 10, 2 times 7 is 14 plus 1 is 15, and 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7. Do my addition. How many decimal places are in my answer? Or I'm sorry, in my problem I have 1, 2, 3, 4, which means I need to have 1, 2, 3, 4 decimal places in my answer, which gives me a final answer of 7.65. And you really don't need the zeros on there. They're not going to change the value. So now I have this. Negative 12.6 plus 7.65. Well, because I'm doing addition now, and my signs are different, I actually have to subtract and keep the sign of the larger. Remember when you're subtracting you have to line up your decimal places or your decimal points. So now I can subtract 15 and 609 and 11 minus 7 is 4. Okay, since my signs are different, I subtract it and I keep the sign of the larger. So it looks like my final answer is going to be a negative 4.95.